For decades, scientists and engineers have imagined ways to improve life with technology. Today, computers are an integral part of our world, influencing the way we listen to music, communicate, take photos, and use information. As computers become more pervasive, the field of computer science expands. Computer scientists don't just sit behind keyboards programming the latest computer games. They're in labs, offices, hospitals, and classrooms, working in nature and around the world, making discoveries and creating new technology. Meet a few of the diverse UW students and faculty who have made computer science their career. I'm a programmer in a proteomics lab. So we study proteins using a technology called mass spectrometry. And what we measure with the mass spectrometer are proteins. So one of the things we do in our lab is we develop tools for looking at cells and understanding what's happening within an organism at the cellular level. And the Human Genome Project is looking at one particular aspect of a cell, which is the, the genes. And we're looking at another aspect, uh, which are the proteins in the cell, which really control all the functions that happen. Proteins are essential you know, to every, everything. Everything's about proteins. We like to think so, at least. <laughs> I like working in a group and being able to create tools that the biologists can use. And I get immediate feedback, too, like, oh, this is great, it's really helping, or this doesn't work at all, why not? And the instrument captures a piece of data, and we have to look at the measurements that it's made and sort of work backwards to figure out what the protein was. What I like is using them as a tool to answer biological questions. And that's, that's the part that I'm really excited about, is being able to just analyze so much more data in a more, in a more powerful way than you can by hand. I think really in any branch of science, computers are just essential now. And you can really set yourself apart as a valuable scientist and researcher by having um, more computational knowledge. Beyond just you know, being able to turn on a computer and use sort of basic applications, if you have some knowledge of how to solve problems, essentially. I mean, the fancy word for it is algorithms. But being able to look at a problem and come up with a computer solution is, is a really valuable skill in any branch of science. My name is Carl Hartung and I'm a computer engineer. I did my undergrad degree at the University of Washington and I have a master's in computer science from the University of Colorado at Boulder. I was working with a group doing sensor network research and people at the University of Montana wanted someone from our group to go and work with them for the summer and I raised my hand and ended up in Montana. So the project I'm working on is called the uh, Fireworks Net, and what it is is uh, we take sensors, um, we put them around a forest fire to sense information, and then they send that information back to us. And knowing that, it helps them better predict which way the fire is going to go, uh, how it's going to behave, and that leads to a safer environment for the firefighters. This is the sensor package that we developed uh, to measure weather conditions, and it attaches. What's really nice about it is uh, we get to go outdoors, um, and we're actually working out in the woods, putting these sensors out in the woods, so it's not you know, sitting behind a desk. Um, I got to fly in a helicopter a couple times while we were doing this to find out what it was that they needed and what they wanted, and then I could build those systems for them. The other thing is I had to be trained. Um, I had to actually go through fire training to do this job, so I actually had to go through all of the basic fire training and become certified as a firefighter. We actually deployed the system on a, on a complex of fires in Idaho, and once it was out, uh, we were able to get all the information uh, about the fire and then the next day the fire behavior analyst was able to use it in the briefing in order to let the firefighters know what was going to happen uh, out on the fire today and what to expect the fire to do. In the future they want to attach these sensors to people actually and not just throw them out in the woods and also they'll be able to determine where the people are in the fire so that you know if someone gets lost they'll be able to help help them get out of the fire environment. Computer science isn't just sitting behind a desk all day. You can get out there and you can really make something that can make a difference. My lab is called Neurobotics, and really the idea is to understand how human brain can control things like this. We think this is so easy to do, so we want to understand how this can be done. So what we're trying to do with this is to build um, anatomically correct prosthetic system 
which could replace any part of the missing limb. A lot of um, hand surgeons want to uh, buy this system now because they can use this as a pre-operative planning tool. Motion capture is basically a, you know, really capturing what's going on physiological or things that you can see. You're going and grabbing for a cup. You know that you're bending your joints to do it, but you know, we don't really get to have the data about which joints are bent by how many degrees unless we put markers or sensors on the fingers and then really capture that. We can at least understand what's different about the healthy movement and the not so healthy movement and then trying to augment that difference with the robotic or computer systems. And people might just imagine this field to be, you know, going and working for computer science industry, but no, no, computer scientists can go and work in the hospital, work along the side with doctors, become a doctor, um, become a lawyer. All, you know, this is really an enabling um, field which has many doors in the future to open. I'm a computer science graduate student at the University of Washington. I work on tactile graphics, which is the process of translating images from textbooks into a tactile format so that blind people can feel them and understand what the image is trying to say. And we're trying to figure out smart ways to do that. Um, also, when we print out images, we use 8.5 by 11 paper when we're you know, printing out things on our normal printers. For blind people, if they have to feel a whole image, they need to have a bigger space because it's, it's hard to feel an image and figure out what's going on. You need more of a space so it can spread out and you can get more detail. My project specifically helps out many blind students, like children up until college or after college, by giving them access to textbooks. And I really like the idea of making education more accessible. We ask two blind people that we work with to get verification on the success of our images. I'll come in to get his feedback on certain images I've produced. I can't tell what makes an image understandable. It doesn't appeal to me too much to just work behind a computer, um, updating software, but working with people is really what I'm interested in. Um, working on applications, getting people's feedback on it, working in groups, and that's something that I also think a lot of people don't realize that computer science can be like. It's basically just a field where you're problem solving and you can choose whatever problems you want, whatever applications you want, and then work to solve those problems. I don't know, I think just thinking of creative ways to solve problems, if you're interested in that at all, then it's a really great field. I had an understanding that I wanted to work with rural communities in some ways. So when I came to the University of Washington, I told myself, I really want a strong technical background. I want to know how to create information tools that will be useful and relevant to rural communities. So currently I'm working for Microsoft Research in India, and I'm in charge of the digital study hall operations in and around Bangalore. Digital study hall is really just trying to address the problems in education in rural and slum communities. Uh, currently around India. It's trying to build what we call a people's database, which is really a database that we say is built by the people and for the people. And this database is a storehouse for all sorts of educational content. I think the ability to do this type of work is really what's drawn me to India. And it's really that on an everyday basis what keeps me here and keeps me really motivated and driven to uh, continue working here. What a student gains as an undergraduate in the field of computer science is really much, much greater than just the ability to code. I think it's really a frame of mind that a student gets in terms of how to look at a big picture and how to break that big picture up into smaller pieces and analyze those smaller pieces, figure out how to make those pieces more efficient, how do those pieces relate to each other, how do they communicate with each other. I think this frame of mind has really helped me understand how exactly these information systems can be built and should be built for rural communities. I think the thing that I have enjoyed most about being an undergraduate computer science major really has been the ability to do real work, to build real systems and applications that have implications for the poor people in our world.